Guys, as this time of year rolls around, I'm sure you're like me, and it's got you feeling all nostalgic, looking back at the checkpoints of the year and those highlights and big moments that... Maybe you just wanna make some emo rap beats, is what I'm saying. What's up gang and welcome to another episode of Inspired By, a series where we look at the musical trends past and present so that you can understand the techniques used and make better music. My name's Will and I make a plethora of music under the moniker Hush Child and today we're looking at the kind of emo rap subgenre. Today I'm going to be going over the stylistic elements that can help you achieve that particular sound and I think you're going to find it really really helpful. As always, shout out to our sponsor Soundsmiths for sponsoring this video. Today I use their drum sounds from the Lo-Fi collection. If you want to find out more information about them, you can visit soundsmiths.co.uk or go to Splice and type in Soundsmiths. They have a wonderful selection of loops and one shots. So if there's something that you're looking for in particular, I'm sure you'll find it. As always, if you want to download this project or any seen in previous videos, just head to patreon.com forward slash the Will Hatton. Let's jump into the episode. Cool. So today we're making some emo rap. So this is going to be reminiscent of artists like Lil Peep, Lil Tracy, Lil Aaron. Basically, if you're little whoever and the lyrics to your song sound like a verse from a boxcar racer song. <laughs> I wish I was taller. I wish I had, I could feel my spine or whatever. <laughs> so to start things off, we've kind of got this sample that I've grabbed from Splice. There's a bit of processing on it. We've got some delay that's ping-ponging from left to right, just on quarter note markings. We'll come back to RC20. I've got EQ8. I've just scooped out this frequency here around the 500 mark. I wasn't enjoying that. And added some multi-band dynamics, just bringing down the mids a little bit. As I said, RC20, just adding a little bit of noise to our sample. Ducking whenever the transients are slightly loud and some reverb. And I've rolled off a lot of the lows, a lot of the highs. So we've got this kind of telephone EQ effect at the beginning here. And this just sounds like this on its own. And as you can tell, we're just automating the DJ filter there as well. So it kind of comes from a more low passed effect to a more kind of middle or high passed effect as we go in. And then as you hear just before the drop of the song, I'm just pitching the sample down a semitone before we jump into and nothing that's too crazy, but just adds a little bit of flavor. You're hearing it in a lot of uh, tracks that are produced by Timberland at the moment, a lot of tracks that are produced by Kenny Beats. They all have this kind of um, stuttered start to their track. Something that I wanted to do with the sample was just add a little bit of flavor. And I kind of took this inspiration from DJ Shadow's first track on introducing, where he sampled the end stab of a piano. So I kind of processed this piano in a similar way to give it maximum bass and just make it sound really low, really gravelly under our main sample. One of the key things that you're going to notice in the drop is this 808 that we have here. And this is going to be, you know, the main source of impact from our track here. Playing everything all together, it sounds like this. So that 808 is really just an extension of what the piano is playing in the lower register there. Just with some small embellishments between the end of the bar and beginning of the bar here. Now when you're working with an 808 guys, don't forget this handy tip. Sometimes we download a sample that isn't quite long enough. Throw it into Simpler, add a fade and a fade out. And if you join it at the right point where the transient kind of meets at the top here, you should be able to get an 808 that is unending. 
See how it just loops there? And of course, adjust your decay, your release time as well, so that your 808 naturally fades at the pace that you like it. As always, add in a compressor there just to sidechain the kick drum so we're not fighting for the same space. Now, speaking of the kick drum, let's jump into the drum selection. So as always, I'm using Soundsmith's samples here. They've got this fantastic selection of sounds from their lo-fi sample pack, which you can get from their website, soundsmiths.co.uk, or directly from Splice. But I'm using a selection of sounds from that lo-fi pack here. And for the kick drum, there's not a lot of sub bass in my kick drum there because the 808 is doing all the work. In terms of my drums, I've just recorded a little rim shot click there and then underneath the Soundsmith's Foley snare and then that just adds a little bit of gravel to that otherwise clean rim shot. For the hi-hats, I've taken two Soundsmith's samples here. And the importance of the two samples is so that we have a side stick sound and we have more of a tip of the drumstick sound on the hi-hat there. And with these samples, you can see in the bottom left here, there's a star on detune. And that's because the notes over an eight bar phrase are all detuned slightly, just by a few cents, so that they do all sound individual. You can see that I've used a range of dynamics here and I've just transposed it by a semitone at times as well. Again, just to make sure that we have a range of dynamics and that it feels more human. Coupled with this, every now and then, I'm just having this Soundsmith's open hi-hat. Now, something that's really nice about the drums is I've just taken a couple of samples from two different kit sounds and uh, just created this. And you can hear that there's a little bit of reverb on this. I've EQ'd it slightly, some transient master, and that just takes away some of the attack from the transient notes there. So it's not as in your face. I don't want it to be a big, you know, Travis Barker style drum feel that you pay attention to. It just needs to highlight to the listener that that phrase is coming to an end. So I've taken out a little bit of the transient action there, and it's got a tiny bit of side chain on there as well. So that the kick drum will alleviate again some of those transients. Like I said, a tiny, tiny bit of Valhalla plate reverb there so that it sounds like we've put that drum kit in a room. It's not just hanging in space. That reverb lends itself nicely to jumping back into our sample here that we had from the beginning. Following this, I've just added that classic trappy kind of sound. Now it is emo rap or emo trap as some people call it. So I wanted to have something that sounded like those rattle hats that we hear in a lot of, you know, 2019, 2020 trap. So I've just taken this cowbell sample and I've processed this by forward transient markings and brought that down so they're super staccato. You can't hear any of the tone or the overtones from the cowbell and just couples itself with the hi-hat that you can hear there. So it doesn't play a main role, but it is just a little additive to our beat. So it's slightly more tonal than the hi-hat is. There is a small part of vinyl noise that I've just taken from Splice here, just to add a little bit of a feeling. And apart from that, we've got some reverse notes from our main sample melody. With a little bit of DJM filter, remember that's a free plugin from Exfa, so make sure you cop that. It's not a sponsor or anything like that. I just think some of their free plugins uh, are amazing and I use them every day. So we've got our little reverse sample there, coupled with some reverse crashes. And then finally, I make sure that this entire beat sits with our vocal melody that we have here. And this just makes it sound a little bit darker, a little bit more ghostly, a little bit more haunted than it would sound with our main sample playing on its own. So this is it at the break of the song. So we've got a little break down there and it just makes it a little bit more impactful, a little bit more punchy when we come back in to the main part of our track. So if you're interested in making something like emo rap 
emo trap. It doesn't need to be anything too crazy. I'd make it in a minimalist style and just think about maybe three or four key components that you can use to satisfy maybe a vocalist or a rapper that you're aiming to sell this beat to. I hope that was helpful guys. As always, the information is in the description below. And right now you can use the code distrokid.com forward slash VIP forward slash Will Hatton to get 7% off your first year using DistroKid. So there we have it guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Quick question for you. What do you want to see in future episodes as we enter the new year? Do you like the lo-fi tip we're on or do you want to see more hip hop, boom bap? What is your style and what do you want to know more about? As always, you can book one-to-ones with me, get track feedback or download any of the projects from this video or previous at patreon.com forward slash the Will Hatton. We're building a nice little community there and your support really helps out the show. As always, anything that I've mentioned in previous videos, including including my music where I stream all my socials can be found in the description below. I thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.